Welcome, young and old, gay and straight, married, single, bisexual, transgender, welcome. People of all colors, cultures, and abilities, welcome. Noisy, wiggly babies and children of all ages, welcome. Rich and poor, powerful and weak, believers and questioners and questioning believers, welcome. Welcome all you who seek God's graceful, open-hearted love and the beautiful new world that love makes possible. Welcome, children of God. Welcome, children of God. Welcome, children of God who are worshiping from home or from the cabin this weekend. We're so glad that you are worshiping with us today. Welcome, children of God who are present here in this room. And welcome especially to a very special child of God, little Kenny, whose baptism we are going to celebrate today. My name is Karen Bruins. I use she, her pronouns, and I am delighted to welcome you to Lake Harriet. A special welcome if this is your first or second time. We're so glad that you're here. If you're worshiping online, please let us know you're here. If you are uh, worshiping for the first time in person, please take a moment and introduce yourself following the worship service. I would love to meet you. We'd like all of you to fill out the digital welcome pad. You can just scan this on your telephone. It'll take, right to, take you right to the digital welcome pad where you can share anything you'd like to share about yourself, any requests you have about getting to know people, places, and the ministry of this church. This time I'd like to ask you to rise, please, in body or in spirit as we join together in our call to worship. Let's pray. Holy God, we've praised into the fabric of our days so our lives become a blessing to others. We've peace into our worlds and deeds so hatred and anger are disarmed. We've love into our work so accomplishments are imbued with humility. We've kindness into our actions, so the world becomes a joyous place to live. We've hope into every encounter, so we may testify to God's continuing resurrection. We've songs into our worship, so our mourning might echo in praise to God. Amen. Let's sing. Shall awaken, we shall arise again. 
unless you'd like to come sit on the rainbow mat with me. Come, no, on the mat. Come sit here. It's really cool. It's brand new. It's a rainbow. Hi, friends. Come on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Ariel Johnson. I'm the director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries here at Lake Harriet, and I use she, her pronouns, and I'm so excited because we're going to make a nice little circle on this mat. Do you see what's on my mat? Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, there are rainbows on my mat, and I absolutely love a good rainbow. When do we see, don't worry about it right now. Do you know when do we see rainbows? When do we see them? Do we see them in the daytime? Do we see them in the nighttime? No, we don't see them in the nighttime. We usually see rainbows after what? Storm. A storm. And it's really cool because people who are really good at science which is not me, that's not my thing. I'm not very good at science, but I know that there's some sciencey thing that happens. So when it rains and then the sun comes out, there's like a reflection that happens. We get to see this big old rainbow. And it's really cool because it's a refraction of light. And light is really special because if we didn't have light, what would we see? I know, we wouldn't see pretty much anything. So light is really cool because it can show us the way to something. It can show us a path. It can show us a way to travel on a journey. There's lots of different places where we see light. And I'm excited today because in this rainbow, we see our rainbow light from rain. But we're going to talk about another way that we bring light into the world. And that's with babies. Why are you not as excited as me about the babies coming? Thank you. Yeah, be excited. So I'm going to actually invite Pastor Karen to come up because she is going to bring a special, special light into our world today, and I want to see it. So we're going to stay right here. I'd like to invite Kenny and his parents and the sponsors to come forward as we happen. prepare for this beautiful sacrament of Christian baptism. We also want to say hello to sponsor Hannah, who is online worshiping with us from Colorado. We're so glad that you are here to support the family with your prayers. Hi, little buddy. How you doing? Big smile. So today we have the honor and privilege of celebrating Christian baptism. Uh, it's a beautiful sign. It is a gift from God. It is a sign of God's love and mercy. And baptism is a sign of a promise and a relationship with God. In baptism, God says to Kenny, I love you so much and I want to get to know you. And we all respond by saying, yes, Kenny, we love you too. Oh. Now this precious little one can't fully understand what this gift of grace means for his life yet. And so he's going to need parents and sponsors and family and church congregation to walk alongside him as he grows in the faith. So I have questions now for Cody and Sydney and sponsors. You're going to be models for Kendrick of what the tenderness and mercy of God looks like. You will show them what a Christian looks like. Therefore, I ask you these historic baptism vows. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, we do. We do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, we do. We do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of every age, every nation, and every race? If so, say, we do. We do. Will you raise this precious child in the church? so that from the body of believers, in the nursery, in children's ministry, in youth group confirmation, service, and worship, he will grow in his faith until he proclaims Christ for himself. If so, say, we will. We will. Let us pray. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and the precious little one who will receive it. Amen. And what name is given this beautiful Son of God? Why are you wet? <laughs> Did you get wet? What name is given this little guy? Kendrick Wells. <gasps> Kendrick Wells, come see Auntie Karen. Hello, buddy. Hi, Kendrick. How are you, sweetheart? You want to see? You want to put your fingers in there? See the water? Yeah. Kendrick Wells, it is with joy and love that I baptize you today in the name of God the Father who created you, 
In the name of Christ, the Son who has redeemed you, and in the power of the Holy Spirit who will sustain you. Kendrick, today you are forever sealed as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Hi. <laughs> will you raise your hands toward Kendrick and we're going to pray for him today. God, we give you thanks for the gift of this precious child. We know that you already have been working in his life and that you will continue to do so. We know that you will help him to grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ. So we ask that you help his parents, his sponsors, his family, and this congregation to help him love you and love his neighbor. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. There's a congregational response that we'll put up on the screen and I'd like to ask you to join me. We welcome this child joyfully and reverently as a member of our family, the family of God. We offer ourselves to be the sisters and brothers, uncles and aunts, grandfathers and grandmothers in Christ to try to surround him with God's kind of love. We accept as our sacred responsibility helping this child to grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I have a candle, and we'd like you to light the candle for Kenny off of the baptism candle. When do we light candles, children? What kind of occasions? Birthdays? Today is like a birthday for Kenny, so we want to encourage you on the anniversary of his baptism to talk to him about who was here, the promises that you made, and your hopes for dreams and dreams for him as he grows in Christ. Well, we have a song of blessing we're gonna sing now and our children know it too, so help us sing and bless baby Kenny. a gift for you today. I do. So this is a book. It's called Welcome Child of God. And we give this to you that when he gets a little bit older, you can read it so y'all can remember his baptism together. And then I will give you this. And there is a certificate that the sponsors can sign to remember this day. And I suppose you want the baby back. <laughs> you can keep him for the service. I'll keep him for the service. I'd be happy to do that. God bless you, baby Kenny. Love you. Here you I go. Want to come with me? We're gonna head Congratulations. Out this way. Let's welcome this child of God. So this is first John verses chapter one verses five through ten. God is light. This is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with God while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, the one who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar, and God's word is not in us. Thank you, Paul. Friends, will you join me in a moment of prayer? Come, Holy Spirit, come and speak through these words of Holy Scripture today. Open our minds and think through them open our hearts and love through them, open our hands that we might serve you. 
It is in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. It's so about 10 years ago, we were going to host the big family Thanksgiving at our house. The only room that was big enough to add some extra tables was our family room, so I was frantically cleaning the family room, as you do. First, I had to shake off all the dust that was on the TV so you could no longer write your name on the TV. Then I had to wash the patio doors to get rid of all the dog mud and footprints. I sprinkled this baking soda stuff on the carpet and vacuumed it up, and the room smelled amazing. I washed the slip covers for the couch and the chair and put them back on, and overall, things looked pretty clean. I was excited. Now, at that time, our family room had some area rugs scattered around the room. They were not for decorations. They were to cover holes in the carpet. We had a couple of kids in college at the time, and we just did not have money at that time to replace the holy carpet. So something happened. I picked up one of those throw rugs under my newly vacuumed carpet, and what I saw took my breath away because the carpet under the area rugs was really clean. <laughs> and now the carpet in the rest of the room looked and was filthy. Now, until I'd seen the two areas side by side, I had no idea. I'd spent all this time and money trying to cover up the holes in the carpet, and I hadn't paid much attention to the carpet itself. So I did what any good hostess would do. I tossed the area rugs back in place. <laughs> And I said, I'll deal with that later. It occurs to me that tossing those area rugs back down on the carpet is a pretty good picture of our lives and what we do in many parts of our lives. I'll deal with it later. I'll hide it so no one sees it. Well, their mess is much worse. It's too much work to clean it. And my favorite excuse of all, I'll just blame it on the dog. Here's the thing. You can say all those things, you can make all kinds of excuses, but the dirt is still going to be there, and the holes in the carpet are still there, even if they're covered with area rugs. And I knew it. In your life, are there things that you try to keep hidden? Things like holes in your carpet, or maybe just how dirty your carpet is, or something bigger. We are in week two of a sermon series that is called Get Real. And in it, we're talking about having vulnerability with ourselves, with God, and others. Researcher, author, and storyteller Brene Brown says, living courageously means living from the heart and being authentic and vulnerable. Remember last week in the video, she showed a, an ASL sign for vulnerability, living from the heart. She also says, it means allowing something we typically hide to be seen. Vulnerability is making the decision not to hide that hole in the carpet from God, from others, or maybe even from ourselves. Today, I want to talk about three words that can help us have vulnerability with God. Sin, confession, and repentance. And I want to acknowledge from the outset that those words, sin, confession, and repentance, have sometimes been used to bully people or to shame people. Those are words that may have been used in the past to traumatize you or cause pain, especially if you were in a very conservative culture. If that happened to you, I am deeply sorry. I hope you will, with an open heart and an open mind, explore sin, confession, and repentance with me today. I hope we'll do it in a way that's more healthy and a way that is more helpful. I want us to reframe and reclaim those words as tools that can help us be vulnerable with God. When I am open and honest with a friend, our relationship grows. And when I am open and honest with God, that relationship grows as well. That's our goal. Confession and repentance are things that can help that relationship to grow. So let's take a look at all three. Let's start with sin and a working definition. Sin is anything that keeps us from loving God and others well. Anything that gets in the way of us loving God and loving others well. Sin is relational in that way. My relationship with God, my relationship with others. Theologian Sally McFaig described it this way. Sin is engaging in things that make you want to hide from God. 
So what makes you want to hide from God? Violating the Ten Commandments, things like lying and stealing and being dishonest or unfaithful to one's partner, those are things we try and hide from God and from others. Those are things that keep us from loving God and loving others well. But I want to look at today more closely some things in our lives that we might not think about as things that get in the way of our relationship with God and others. Let's especially name some things that might be unique to people in this neighborhood and this faith community. Could this get in the way of your relationship with God and others? Overwork. How does working too much impact your relationship with God or your relationship with other people, especially your family? Here's another one. Not having enough margin in your life. When you're typing a document, there's a margin that goes all the way, all the way around the edge of the paper, and the goal of the margin is to make the document much more readable. In our lives, we need margin as well. Margins are the bare minimum or the limit beyond which something becomes difficult or impossible. So margin is that space between us and our limits. When we don't have enough margin in our lives, we don't have time to catch our breath, to reflect, and it gets in the way of our relationship with God and others. People lacking in margin tend to be chronically late because they don't give themselves enough time to get somewhere. And then especially if something like road construction comes up, they tend to be chronically late. Without intending to, this sends a message to the other people in their lives that their lives are not as important or their time is not as important. When short on margin, people are often stressed and cranky and they do not bring their best self to their relationships with others or with God. When you are short on margin, people start to lose hope and faith and trust in you because you've let them down in your commitments one too many times. If you have no financial margin in your life, if you spend, spend, spend everything you possibly can, it means you won't have margin to respond to an emergency like a tire that needs to be replaced or an opportunity to give financially to a really great cause in the world. So if margin is an area in your life in which you struggle, you might want to connect with a classic book called Margins by author Richard Swenson. At our staff meeting this week, I asked the church staff to come up with some more things that prevent us from loving God and loving others well. And they included these things. Getting caught up in material possessions trying to fill some empty place in my life, some hole in my self-esteem by accumulating more and more stuff. They talked about having overscheduled lives and families, which leads to stressed out kids and under-connected families. They talked about not taking care of our bodies or, or being too prideful, which gets in the way of admitting that we're struggling with something or that we've made a mistake. They talked about how cell phones get in the way of our relationship with God and with others. Watch parents at the park with young children. How many of them are watching their children playing and how many of them are on the phone while Johnny or Susie in the background is saying, watch me, watch me. The last one they named was self-centeredness, thinking or acting like the most important person is me, myself, and this guy. What things are getting in the way of your relationship with God and with other people? Let's talk about confession. In woodworking, there's a term called a veneer. It's this thin piece of really high-quality wood that is glued over an inferior piece of wood. What you see on the surface is not what is underneath. Confession is simply an opportunity to peel back the veneer. It's about telling God what's happening underneath the surface. In 2015, there was a political candidate, doesn't matter which party the person was from, who made the news while speaking at a Christian conference. The politician was asked, have you ever asked God for forgiveness? And the politician stated, I'm not sure I have. I just try to go from there and do a better job. 
No, I don't think I've asked for forgiveness. If I do something wrong, I just try and make it right and I don't bring God into that picture. At a later interview, the candidate was asked to clarify their comments and was asked again, have you ever asked God for forgiveness? And the politician said, why do I have to repent or ask for forgiveness if I'm not making any mistakes? I work hard. I'm an honorable person. Wouldn't it be great in the world of politics if politicians would peel back the veneer and just be honest with God and with us? Maybe admit something from their past or a mistake they made while in office or come clean about admitting they could have handled a situation or a relationship better. Wouldn't that make for a better world? But it, it's not just politicians, it's us too. That's why in the reading that Paul read from us from 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, it says, If we claim we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. Nadia Bowles Weber, in her book Pastrix, writes about her own experience. She moved from a very shame-based culture in her upbringing, and she didn't know what to do with repentance now as an adult. And she wrote this after an experience of powerful grace. She says, it's like a toddler avoiding her nap until limp-limbed, she finally stops flailing and falls asleep and receives rest, the very thing she needs and the very thing she fights. When someone like me, who will go to superhero lengths to avoid truth, runs out of options, when I'm found out, or too exhausted to pretend anymore, or maybe just confronted by my sister, it feels like the truth might crush me. And that is right, the truth, truth does crush us. But the instant it touches us, it somehow puts us back together into something honest. It's death and resurrection every time it happens. See, confession is not about saying we are horrible people and we're waiting for God to punish us. God does not, like a hockey player who's committed a foul, send us to the penalty box, which I heard this week is often called the sin bin in hockey. Confession isn't that. Confession is about God inviting us into wholeness, into a new and better way of life. It's an invitation to be a recipient of God's grace. Nadia Bowles Weber goes on. God's grace is not defined as God, forgiving, as God being forgiving to us even though we sin. Grace is when God is the source of my wholeness, which makes up for my failings. My failings hurt me and others, and they even hurt the planet. And God's grace to me is that even in my brokenness, my brokenness is not the final word. My selfishness is not the end all. Instead, it's God who makes beautiful things out of my stuff. Sin, confession, peeling back the veneer. The final step in the process is repentance. Again, it's another one of those words that's been used to bully and shame people, like the dude on the street corner downtown with the bullhorn that's yelling, you need to repent or you're all going to hell. Let's reframe that. Repentance is what people think of as the I'm sorry part, and that is true. It comes from this Greek word, metanoia, which means to change one's life, to change one's perspective, one's purpose. It means to turn. It's like when you're on a road trip and you've made a wrong turn, you are so relieved and you rejoice when you get back on the right road. That's what it means. But here's my favorite definition of repentance. Different after. Different after. Repentance means to be different, to think differently, to act differently. And repentance is this ongoing commitment on our part to be different after. There's a pastor in St. Louis whose name is Matt Miofsky, and he wrote this that I thought was quite helpful. God actually uses the practice of confession and repentance not to tear us down, but to build us up. When we do this stuff, we gain a greater capacity to be vulnerable with God, and yes, with other people too. 
It keeps us regularly dealing with our stuff in our lives that we might otherwise shove away or hide, not deal with, and allow it to metastasize. You start to see God not as someone who wants to condemn you, but as someone who wants to free you from the stuff that is holding you back. We begin to see God not as some divine parent shaking a finger at us and saying, I told you not to do that, but as a God who says, you want to make that change? I can help you do that, even if you think you can't do it on your own. End quote. Today, I want to leave you with a prayer practice that you can try on your own this week. The people in the contemplative practices small groups learned this last year, and this year one group will lead it this year. It's a very old practice that's called the examen. It's a practice of inviting God to help you look back over your day. So here's what you do. They recommend doing it at noontime or in the evening. First, pray for light. We learned in today's scripture that God is light. So we ask for God's light to shine back over our day. Then review your day with thanksgiving. Spend a few moments in gratitude, thanking God for the blessings in your life, great or small. It might have been a a person, a relationship, the beauty of a fall day. Now's where you go back and you notice something. First, notice the places and times in your life when you felt close to God and close to others. And then notice the times and places and relationships in your life where you didn't feel close to others or to God. What were the things that made you feel far apart? And you ask God to be with you tomorrow as you prepare to welcome a new day and new opportunities to love God and love others. And then you might end this prayer practice at home just by praying the Lord's Prayer or singing a simple song. So let's try that for a few minutes here. Find a position that's comfortable, maybe with your hands in your lap. Close your eyes. And let me lead you through this prayer. Think back to yesterday. Ask God to shed God's holy light on the day that's past, remembering that God is light. So first, review with thanksgiving. Notice the blessings that were in your life yesterday. The people you were with, the beauty of nature, time to reflect and renew. For what do you give thanks? Now, Think about those places, those relationships in your life yesterday where you were able to, God, to love God and to love others well. Take just a minute and talk to God about those places where you did love well. And now it's time to peel back the veneer. Think about those places, those times, those interactions, those relationships where you didn't love God and you didn't love others well. What was it that got in the way? Talk to God about that thing that got in the way. And lastly, ask God to be present with you today, helping you to love God and love others well. Amen and amen. Let me know if you try that practice in your life this week and how it goes for you. How did the examen go? I want to invite you to turn in your bulletin to page number six. We have a prayer of confession. It will also be up on the screen. And remember, this is not something to make you feel bad. It's an invitation to enter into the shalom, the wholeness, the fullness of God. It is in our confession where we realize our desire for God and our hope for God's mercy. It is in admitting the truth of our lives that we take the first step toward wholeness and healing. So let us make our confession first in silent prayer.
Now let's join together in the unison prayer. God of all the saints, God of all the sinners, hear our prayer. We would be saint-like, holy, good, patient, loving, but we end up feeling more like sinners, full of failures of morality, selfish, mean. Perhaps you see us simply as human, as beloved, and flawed and trying, and failing and succeeding. In all of this, forgive the wrong we have done, and bless the good we have accomplished. Keep on loving us and helping us, and molding us more and more into the image of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and thus freed to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. And now as forgiven and reconciled children of God, let us pray together in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time when we prepare our hearts to be generous toward our God. And today I just keep thinking about baby Kenny and the kind of church we want to put around him. So the gifts that you give will help this little one to experience God's love and God's grace. May we be generous in our giving. Amen.
Give us your heart. Please join with me in the unison prayer of dedication. Faithful one, you have entrusted us with so many gifts that are more important than worldly possessions. You have called us to be stewards of all that you have created. We strive to fulfill your call to be generous by sharing the bounty you have placed under our care. We know that we visibly demonstrate our commitment to your work in this world by giving these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be sure to look over your bulletin for some information about some really fun community events that are happening over the next 10 days. There are more details available on the church website. I'm just going to highlight a few of these. Next Saturday is the Harvest Walk for Hunger. It's a way to support our ministry partner, the Joyce Uptown Food Shelf. They have all kinds of fun activities like live music and face painting and fun things. There's a 5K walk on the Greenway, and it's held where the Greenway, the bike trail, meets the Greenway Common Shopping Mall on the west end of Lake Street. On Sunday the 16th, the United Women in Faith, formerly known as the United Methodist Women, are holding their annual soup sale. It's back after COVID. You can purchase some delicious soup with the profits, proceeds benefiting the mission and ministry of the Lake Harriet United Methodist Women in Faith. Next Friday and Saturday, the Lake Harriet Players are presenting the play Harvey. It's a delightful, uplifting, and humorous play. And that'll be here in the church in the Fellowship Hall on Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6.30 and a free will offering is uh, asked if you're able to do so. Lastly, on Wednesday night, October the 19th at 6.30, we're having the annual blessing of the animals out in the church courtyard. So come and bring your pet and celebrate. You can bring your real pet, you can bring a photo of your pet, you can bring a stuffed animal if you're someone, a child who doesn't have a pet. Bring something to be blessed. And there will be a service project for us to do benefiting God's creatures, God's animals. There'll be some singing, some great tri trivia games, and some hot apple cider serves. So please come and join us for those events. I'd like to ask you to rise Pastor in body Karen! and body. What? Pastor Karen, we have one more announcement. Pastor Karen, we, we have one more announcement. I have a feeling we've been set up. You've been set up. Thank you, thank you. So this month is Pastor and Clergy Appreciation Month, and today specifically is Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Aww. So Pastor Karen. Um, so I'm gonna invite my friend Lori to come up, um, because we There's want more. to. Yeah, sorry. We want to honor you a little bit. Um, so friends who have been aware of the secret since this morning, that little uh, sheet that you received as you walked in, this is a good time to take that out. We also have did all you, of these lovely did cards. Did you make these you. cards? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm going to hang them up in my office. Thank Great. you, friends. Unfortunately, we weren't able to sneak this into the slides, so I'm sorry for the people at home. Um, but everybody has something we're all going to say to you. Oh, here we go. We're going to follow along and read this beautiful prayer of blessing over you, Pastor Thank Karen. You. So, Creator God, we are so thankful for Karen and the leadership she brings to Lake Harriet. We give thanks that she leads with vulnerability, humility, and love. We are grateful for the many gifts she brings, for her trust in and love of God, 
for her wisdom and insights, which are a reflection of your love and joy, for her gentle guidance in our spiritual journeys and discovery of our faith, for the comfort and care she brings to us when we are hurting, for how she celebrates with us when we are joyful, for her work connecting us to each other and guiding our community, for the warmth and welcome she shares with each one of us. God, we're also grateful for the blessing of Karen's husband, Dave, whose faith and dedication shows through his service in so many years of the church. We pray that you help our congregation be a source of love and support for Karen in her ministry. And God, we pray that you continue to bless Karen, Dave, and their family with peace, health, and well-being, joy, love, and strength. Amen. Oh, thank you. But we had to give you some time and just give you a little extra expression of appreciation oh, today. That's beautiful. Um, and then we all have one more surprise. We have tickets for you and Dave at one of your favorite local theaters. Ooh. To take in a play. Thank you. A uh, little rejuvenation and rest and just a thank you from us. So maybe some enjoy. fodder for next summer's Broadway series? Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> thank you all very much. I am delighted and honored and really touched to be you your pastor. Your thank day. you. Thank you, Lori. Thank God bless you. you. Uh, thank you, friend. <laughs> Okay, now will you rise in body or in spirit and let's sing this song of Christ and his glorious light in our lives. new week may you be quick to recognize when you've gotten off track may you be quick to apologize may you be quick to receive God's grace knowing that you are a holy beloved and beautiful child of God go in peace amen
justice flow.